but Let most me, people can't vote. You know, when I got elected, I come in out of the desert. I was one of those winter visitors out in the desert, and I decided to settle in Quartzsite. I come in in July to see, I'm going to live there, I'm going to start in July when the weather's like this. So I started in, my buddy said, what are you doing on Tuesday night? There's a council meeting. And I went to a council meeting. And all hell broke loose ever since. But I was an unknown. And uh, Mr. Roth and I got a lot of voters registered. Uh, we took it from 1,100 and something to 1,300 voters. And uh, that's why I got elected. I was an unknown, but I went out and did a voter registration drives with Mike. And that changed the, the mix in the election that I got elected. I got elected by 338 votes to 311. And who's up for re-election in this coming election? Who's, who's the, the one councilman uh, resigned to run against me in this recall. So, so there's but, a recall election against Ed. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. But what's well, happened good. since then? since Jennifer and all the, all the crap. And the story is that everybody that signed that recall, 250-some signatures between all of the six, five, six, five recalls we did, uh, all of those people were run through that NCIC system. That has pissed people off in the town. Now, am I, have I been run? That's the big question. The other question is, where are the checks? The that's big money. issue is money in court site. How much, how much are you talking about? Really? Yeah, that's We're money. talking eight to ten payroll checks every two weeks, 26 times a year, of average of $1,000. The average check, because you don't know, what even from the old records, the checks are a number and an amount, number and amount. So you don't know which ones are the extra checks. There are eight to ten checks extra every two weeks. And... The state ombudsman's office is supposed to, by the end of this month, will come out with a report that I actually filed for on April 2nd. So what's that, April, May, June? You know, it takes a while. <laughs> Anyhow. It's always the money, man. When's the last time the town was audited? Well, you got to understand, an auditor doesn't care. They do two plus two equals four, and that's fine with them. Ten checks equals $1,000 each. That's 10000 If that all balances, the books balance. They don't care where the checks go when they audit it. They don't, they, you know, somebody's name's on the check, somebody, ca Joe cast a check, it's good. They don't look to see who's, why Joe got paid or who Joe is or whatever. Or if Joe even exists. Yeah, or even yeah. Joe, they don't do that. They only look for two plus two equals four. What we're talking about is a forensic audit, and that's different than, than the state audit. We get audited every year, but the state audit just looks two plus two equals four, and books are good, and they disappear. Okay, do you have any more? You want no, to? that was my question. How much money, um, approximately? Millions? Look, millions. That's a picture and there, a guy with your left arm there, uh, kind of like a duck. Yeah. I'm wondering, when you got a uniform, you're under color law, whatever, I, yeah. I'm not an attorney. Uh, if the mayor told him to take his hands off, does that mean he's acting outside of his official capacity from that point on? Uh, I want to answer that. Those three officers, the chief and those two in that picture, uh, you know, when the officers came forward, I contacted Director Holliday at State Police and sent him a letter under the, the letterhead of the town under the signature of the mayor asking that he contact the officers and ASCOP to get the evidence file that they had and to do an investigation of the chief. When this incident happened, now, what, three weeks later, four weeks, whatever it was, I sent an additional letter to Director Holliday asking that he investigate those three people for disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct under state statute is disrupting a public meeting. That surely disrupted the public meeting I was conducting, so. But it sounds like it might, they're not acting in official capacity, so maybe you can sue them civilly. I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm thinking too. I'm thinking. What about the Tucson certification people? Can they sit there and say the chief, the bad bad, there's evidence? Well, here's the thing. The police are certified by, by AZ Post. And up until this spring, they really didn't have the authority to revoke certification. They had they had a complaint department, but they didn't have any ability to do anything with the complaints, other than take them back to the town manager or whoever the supervisor is of the of the officers. But there's a new law, 
And now they can actually, I think it was effective uh, at the 20th of the last month or something, they can actually take their certification and we hope that they but will. Somebody would say Make your final point. We need yeah. to move on. Somebody said to certify he's at the Arizona Supreme Court, you should be saying, hey, look at these clowns. They're not fit. Well, I'm filing a civil rights complaint. As if they're not clowns. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, one, one Complaining thing, to the government every that the government is yeah, kind of a move. You know, how's that working out? One <laughs> thing we're finding out. If you want to complain to the state government, you can't complain on an email. you got to have their form number 90451 or whatever it is, and you got to fill it out properly or it's not a complaint. That's, that's what happened with the open meetings law. Everybody was complaining. Well, you didn't. We don't have any complaint. We didn't have it on the right form. So I made a bunch of the forms up. We got them signed at McDonald's, and I carried them down there and had a press conference on the step. They wouldn't come out and talk to me. <laughs> That's how it works. Pow. Have the promised um, transcripts from the secret meeting that happened on the 10th of last month been ever released? Partially. Well, somehow the badge cam of the duty sergeant in the tactical gear, he's, by the way, the same one I've had all these problems with, somehow his badge cam got put on one of the thumb drives that somebody left to have their, their uh, video audio downloaded on. So we were able to get that. Um, and there, the first 25 minutes isn't on there. So I went down. The town clerk took a whole lot of vacation time after this happened. And uh, she just got back, so I took my thumb drive down yesterday, and I asked specifically for the audio of the meeting. And and we don't actually know if it even exists. Well, I guess we'll find out. Of course, filling open records requests hasn't gone too well lately either, according to the ombudsman. So, <laughs> you know, you can. Tr we're still trying. We the minutes of the meeting were actually, printed, and those were released. Actually, finally. how bad it is. The shredding machine has been working full time in town hall. The chief of police contacted our, our, out there in the boondocks out there, we have an IT guy that works around the county, you know, we don't have one in town government. He, he works here on Wednesday and there on Tuesday. And anyhow, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was at the drug task force office on a day he shouldn't have been there. The chief of police called him, asked, how do I destroy emails? And he said, well, you can't do this. He said, well, yeah, but if I want to destroy emails, are they gone? He says, well, not unless you destroy it. He had two drug enforcement task force officers from QPD that are now suspended standing over his shoulder listening on speakerphone when he made these statements. Uh, <laughs> I went right to DPS the next day. I had a meeting. As a matter of fact, I was on your show, I think, and I went right from there over to DPS uh, to report this. And just the attempt to destroy evidence is a crime. Sure. Yeah. But again, you know, they don't care. They're, I swear to God, DPS is sweeping it under the rug. No! No! no. no. Come on! Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Say it. So, Mr. Judge, you mentioned in the. There is a Santa Claus. Hey, 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 Just got it. about a uh, cop illegal, illegally entering your home along with animal control in the early part. Was that court like that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, now is that one, that cop and the two that are in that photo escorting you out of the building, or the three of those still employed no. by the town? Yes. Yeah. Are the three, any of the three of those suspended right now? No. Nope. They're, so, they're under investigation by DPS, and according to department policy, whatever, whatever, uh, any officer suspected, accused of a crime shall be placed on administrative leave until uh, paid administrative leave until the Vacation. investigation yeah. is completed. So the one that someone illegally entered your home is still good to go to working out right. there. Yeah, and I complained to the county sheriff about the animal control, right. and he said we won't take a trespassing complaint on a county employee. You have to call uh, his boss, and that was Donna Hale. And I, I gave her a formal written complaint, listed the violation numbers under state and federal code, and he was never investigated or disciplined. And by the way, Donna Hale is also our elections board officer. Oh, and it gets better too because the, the sergeant who led them into my home, he was on duty the night that picture is taken. He's not in the video. He's standing quietly in the corner. But his wife is the magistrate judge, and she's also the grant writer for the, who writes grants for the charities that are owned by the town manager with the contract to the town for the tree planting and the animal control. So that welcome to small town government in a nutshell. <laughs> kind of my point. <laughs> Nick, go ahead. Hey, uh, you keep talking about how you know how many times your names were run through this database. 
How do you know that? Yeah. Because part, part of the t sworn testimony of the officers who, who filed these complaints, we have in our possession those sworn yeah. statements signed. You know, when an officer writes something down and signs it, that's a, that is a sworn statement. It's absolute truth. They can be, they can, they can be, well, under penalty of perjury. It's under penalty of perjury. When an officer wrote in one statement, talking to a town council member, why is the chief doing this? The chief has been ordered to, to go get them in quotation marks, meaning political opponents of the town council. That's how he wrote it in his go statement, inside quotation part, go get them. So the, the sworn testimony of the woman who was fired, who was the evidence technician and administrator for the police department, her sworn statement to DPS was that I was run 109 times in two years. Is she In her st sworn statement, which has not been made public until the investigation is over, but it does say that she thought something was funny when she was asked to run a license plate and realized it was her next door neighbor. And she said, well, why are you running my next door neighbor? And they said, because she was seen dropping her dog off at the dog lady's place. <laughs> Apparently that's a crime in court site. Probable cause in court site. Which became, th this became an issue when we were looking for a place to do the show Monday and Tuesday. Who in their right mind is going to open up their air-conditioned meeting room to allow this debate to go on and still expect not to get ticketed for everything? Okay. <laughs> So finally it goes back and forth, ouch quit it, ouch quit it, the manager of this one taco restaurant place and then the owners back, finally the owner comes back and goes, yeah for $400 you can have uh, two days, you can come in there and do it, I'm going, okay that's all like, I'll do it, but you got to give me a really good reason to do it, you know. So I, I'm, I'm with him, man, right on. But, you know, so we decided not to do that. We're going to be going to a clubhouse of one of the RV parks there. Yeah. Right on Main Street. Oh, is that where you live? That's there? Where I live. Right all right, all right, all right. So we're, going to, so we're going to work it out. But um, the one thing that I did want to ask, there was a, I kept trying to retain it. It was, um, oh, man, it was really important, too. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I'm going to ask a question that Ernie asked at the very beginning. Millions of dollars. Be Respect my authority. It's money. Well, you know, Millions that's what of we've bucks. Trying to find more, more out. He, he ran on a platform of trying to figure out where the money was going. And, and every time we ask questions, trying to figure out what could possibly be, be behind this. I mean, we're one tank of gas from the Mexican border. Okay, Highway 95 is probably going to run eventually all the way to Canada under NAFTA or something. We got an east-west corridor of Interstate 10, and we have an underground aquifer. There is water there. So whatever they want to do with it, whatever this long-term plan is, Quartzsite is surrounded by BLM land. And, and within town borders is a patchwork of land that still belongs to the BLM that's supposed to be going up for sale. And we keep wanting to know, well, what's the, what's the plan they know about that they talk about if they're not so secret, secret meetings at Councilman Lucas and Cedary? Um, you know, what is it they're really talking about? What is it that they want to do with this piece of real estate that's inconsistent with a couple hundred thousand people having a sing-along and selling gems and minerals out of a tent? And, and, you know, why are we inconvenient and why are they trying to legislate us out of existence? They've changed the zoning. They repealed and replaced the entire business code in the last... 10 months. I, I mean, they have really put the screws to everything to try and make that lifestyle kind of just quietly go away. And so I'm sort of the last thing that's standing between them and... and hey, hey, you start. There's, there's one thing I want to point out. I, my little brother got into politics down in Okaloosa County, Florida. And he found out, he did, he's a mathematician, a scientist, he did some math and he figured out that there was something wrong with the sheriff's budget and he got involved in it. He did not know that he was having any success. The FBI finally swooped in and arrested the sheriff. Apparently the sheriff had written checks on the public payroll, like Quartzsite, to, he had county board members on his payroll. Now the beauty of that is, you know, all the illegal drug money and everything that was involved in down there in Florida, the, the check issue was what works it's if I give, if I'm the sheriff and I give a county board member a check, we both committed a crime. You're bought and you stay bought now. You know, that's why the check issue I think is so important. Yes. There's money from, you know, it's anecdotally that there's pay for play in court site. 
you don't get a contract in courtside to do anything without you kick back something. I mean, that's that, but that's hard to prove. But the check issue finally found, I think I found them, and that's why they're just desperate, they're going crazy right now, is because the checks will come out. Eventually they'll come out and they're caught. Sounds okay, let me, let me, I want to make this clear. I've been, a lot of you guys have been activists, you know, in Arizona for a long time, at Guten you know, we've been doing this forever, you know, and, and El Pal has been around for a long time, and a lot of guys from the 90s. This is what I know, okay? They always have a plan, and the individual rights of the people there are not in their plan. You just got to find out what the plan is. So I am of the opinion that this plan goes back. There's a little, you know, little flag, little pin, push pin in a map that's big around the planet, and one of those push pins is in quartzite. Yeah. And the reason it's in quartzite is for what they just been saying. There is going to be all, you can look on these different highways that are coming up through Mexico, going through America into Canada, and one of those fingers that are coming up and going right through the quartzite. There's a highway, what was it, 95, 95. you said? That goes straight into Mexico, and they're wide. You, you ever been up to the one that goes from Wickenburg to Kingman? Yeah. You know, they're widening this, they're doing this, they're doing them, and all this, it's all the flow. Quartzite has water. Oh, man. You're out in the middle of the desert and you got water. Guess what? You're my new best friend, okay, to the man. Well, this is known to these people on the county level of this Agenda 21 stuff I keep talking about. And I just really started to become more and more aware of it from people on the left. They're going, look, Ernie, man, this is true. You start, just read this month's magazine and you'll get it. You know, I got plenty of articles in there and you go, wow. It's not, it's stipulated. It's not a secret. So what's happened is there is a level of government that's betting on the future. And the future is what the future development of this place is over the next decades. And Jennifer and Ed are in their freaking way. You are a, you, you are a hurdle in our way to what we have planned. And if they don't get rid of this is not going to stop. And the people that they put in place, I don't even think a lot of them even understand. You know, this chief of police and the local town, they don't know. They don't care. They just know they're getting away with it, and they're supported by people up here that use them as insulation. Think about it. When you got a wire, you get a wire, and you have insulation around it. Big 10-gauge wire, and you got insulation and so on. All the business going up and down the wire, you don't see. All you see is the insulation. And the insulation of these bureaucrats and city councilmen and government and league of and all that stuff, but every now and then you get a short. Oh, we got to bandage up that short, okay? Well, they're the short through the insulation, and they're going to wrap it up because they will not cut the flow. That flow is not going to stop. So if you start going in trying to cut the flow, you want to see where the real problem is, who really behind it, that's why I advocate it's so bad you are not going to fix it. You're going to go in, and the people, and I'll say it, now just for me saying it's going to cause a bunch of short. I'm going to say, disincorporate. All you got to do is take out a petition. You go, I get this meeting, say, you know what, we're just going to be done with y'all. All y'all, we're done. We just unincorporate, it's done, you know, divvy up the debt and this and that. Well, you can't because, and, you, and whatever. Yeah, just done. Yeah. The county's got a lot of debt, though. Fourteen million some odd dollars in debt. And the, and the, and the, to the city? No, the county owes money to, for a court judgment. Well, wait, 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 you know, I'm telling you, it will not stop. This is my point. So they want to know, Joyce, everybody wants to know why I'm so concerned about quartzite. Only as much as that it is such a perfect example of what's happening at every level across the entire country. And the more you resist, the more you're going to come up against what's really happening. So I want to help you guys keep it in the press, keep it going. We're doing a good job just fanning the flame. 
but don't ever think that I'm on the side of fixing it, because then that presumes that I think it can be fixed. Well, Ernie, it's broken. It's broken. you know what? You're good at this, but I, we got to give Mr. Winslow a lot of credit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've sucked that guy 20. Yeah. Hey, hey, and, and Councilman Winslow was actually caught on the mic last year. They, they didn't know the microphones were on before the gavel started the meetings. And, and this was between the election, uh, the primary, where we knew Ed was in the final two and the, and the actual election where he got elected. And I got the audio, and it was myself, former Mayor Oldham, Ed Foster, Mike Roth, and a guy named Dean Taylor, who's kind of the sort of de facto head of the Citizens Coalition for Responsible Government. And the five of us were sitting in the room, and we caught Councilman Winslow on the microphone say, I think if we get all five of them in the front row, we just machine gun them. And Councilman Lucasen says, damn fine idea. So we started calling him Machine Gun Joe, and, and he's not real fond of that either. But what's really scary, and this is, this is really kind of, maybe if, if you had to say what's the million dollar question, when the badge cam from Sergeant Frausto is panning through that secret meeting, you see him set a cell phone on this barricade between where the people sit and where the council sits. They're, they put up a barricade. And on the, the lip, on the edge of the barricade, you see he goes to set up the cell phone that's on, on speakerphone, and he drops it. He has to bend over and pick it up. And you see him set it back up there again. Then his badge cam pans over later in the video, and you see there's two cell phones. So the thing that scared me the most is not the morons running our town or the, the people at the lower level pulling the strings. What I'm concerned about is who are those two people listening to that secret meeting where they declared an emergency existed? Who are those people? Why did they care that that got passed? And why were they afraid to show their faces? Who are those two people whose cell phones are sitting there on speakerphone? And what do the police know about it because they're the ones that set the, the cell phones there? Okay, we'll get <laughs> Guten Kopf. Uh, real quick before I forget, and then we'll get the uh, Guten Kopf. The money that you gave into the hat is for us to do it because I, you know, because I can, I go to McDonald's. But the, the, ew, no, not there. I'll go somewhere else. I'll go Tony Roma, okay? Your money's well spent. But the thing is, is that we still have an opportunity, and Karen's offered to take the money. Yeah, you go over here as you're leaving today. You want to give some money for the officers. Yeah, I'm sure you can, you know, she'll give it to whoever she wants to give it. She thinks it's a good thing to give to because I don't fill out forms. But go ahead and give it to Karen, and she'll accumulate and take care of it. And this will be a donation for the Legal Defense Fund for the officers. Okay? Thank you for Jennifer. Thank you. Donations for Jennifer is what I see. Oh, Jennifer. Jennifer. Yeah. Jennifer. Yeah. Jennifer. Yeah. Jennifer. Donations for Jennifer. Which will promote the officers. I don't the, care. The dogs, the dogs appreciate knowing yeah. us. Someone Kim else can do the police. All right, cool. You know, that's a good idea because a lot of times when, you know, people, you get noticed for standing up because everybody else is on their knees. Okay? <laughs> and when they stand up, you think that this does, you know, and, I, and a lot of us have personal experience from this. When you stand up, you don't get paid for that. It costs money. It costs money in filing. Freedom it costs money isn't in gas. Free, Ernie. It got, pardon me? Freedom isn't free. It, no, it's not. So, yeah, I, you know, that'd be you know, a good thing, you know, help Jennifer out. I might even, oh, yeah, and I owe you guys for breakfast anyway, so you get a dip out of the hat anyway. And, and it's $839 to print my newspaper, and I'm out of work right now. So they, that would be actually, freedom isn't free, but the desert press is. All right, very cool. <laughs> Go ahead. We'll do some isn't advertising. Isn't it that under Title IX, uh, Arizona revised statute? Okay, it was Phone already. Phone. Phone. One of the powers Jeez. of the city council is to regulate the police. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, and you've seen how they regulate them. Right. <laughs> and, and so I to in court site, in court site, the police and the town manager regulate the council. Well, this is the issue that, that I came into conflict with with a civil um, RICO action against. Uh, yeah. The Tempe Town Council and the Tempe Police for the photo radar. We, we have, I, I've department. tried that, and I'll tell you what: putting a complaint into the federal government is mm -hmm. even a deeper, darker black hole. Mm -hmm. You never know whether it worked or not. It, it goes yeah. there, they meet you in the lobby, they take your information, and they disappear, and you never hear from them. That's true, but I want to recommend a book that really uh, concisely. Uh, lays this whole problem out, and it's a book by Judge Andrew Napolitano, and it's called Constitutional Chaos, When the Government Breaks Its Own Laws. It, cool. deals, it deals with the photo radar stuff that's going on, 
but deals with the criminal stuff that went on at, at Waco, at Ruby Ridge, and all this stuff, and he offers some solutions at the end of the book. It's, okay. it's a very good read, so I want to suggest that you you look at that. Thank you very much. One thing I learned about my my decade in, in fighting with like local legislation for dog owners is that once a bad law is on the books, it's on the books. And you can't get it off the books unless you can afford to file a lawsuit to get it off the books. So we have to be really careful who we allow to make laws. I mean, at the, at the end, you know, it, be proactive, not reactive. It's cheaper that way. <laughs> and, and I want to agree with Ernie on one thing. Yeah, get rid of the government. You don't have any laws. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Natural law. Ernie has said many times before, I don't care what some guy in the black robe says, what the judge says. The whole point is when you file the suit, you get the criminality as a matter of public record. Yeah. That's the important thing. Uh, when you get the, their own records, uh, you make it public, people will start to understand and will start to get One, one thing. Okay, five minutes and we got to be done. One last that. point. Uh, the Oath Keepers have came in and are representing Jennifer and I separately because she's okay. got lawsuit issues and I'm the mayor and I can't be part of her lawsuit against the town. But my attorney has looked at the record of the town council in the second meeting that i had at the town council i was elected and you know got to adjourn the meeting on the one meeting after they took away all my powers in between that time i went to the town manager and asked for some reports on what's going on and at the very next meeting of the town council the first one where i had the gavel in my hand for the whole meeting they passed an ordinance saying that elected officials cannot ask for reports without permission of the council. Oh now wait, but my attorney went about this, he looked at state statute, that is secreting public records by design. That's a class four felony. He informed them by letter last week that he intends to charge them unless they rescind that order. They have it in this meeting. So they are now going to be charged with a class four felony right. by design of secreting records. Get them. And winner win or lose, I got you know that I got with the lawsuit will go on the record and I've been willing to stand up and let them charge me now with I think fourteen different misdemeanors and the zoning things. And, and I'm representing myself in all these criminal charges. Mr. Rhodes is going to help me when this is over get <coughs> my piece of the pie back for what I'm spending right now. But uh, I've been telling people, go ahead and let them cite you. They have to make their case in court. Let them prove, you know, uh, beyond a reasonable doubt or, or if it's in a civil claim beyond the preponderance of evidence, that they can do what they can do. I mean, because otherwise it's just going to keep happening. So if you don't document it, you don't film it, you don't create the paper trail, you don't get the minutes of the meeting, you don't, I mean, it's a ponderous pile of paperwork, but if you do it, you'll be vindicated in the end. Don't take the plea. <laughs> I don't take the plea. What are you going to do to assure there's no election fraud? Yeah. Eh. Eh. <laughs> I don't think anybody you know can ever sure that. Yeah. Yeah. By, by, by design in, in Arizona, with the early voting thing that's that we have point. legislated in, that's by design a method of voter fraud. That's I mean, sure. these people, these does people... Does the city count them or does La Paz County count them? La Paz County, County Council, but what's, what happens <laughs> is there's, you know, Quartzite's a city of old folks. I mean, before the current census, we were the oldest community in the oldest county in the nation. Average age was 67.3 years old. And there's a lot of old folks there that these people know, and they go to their home, can we help you, Martha, fill out your ballot? And they get a whole stack of these ballots. And it's legal. That's legal. They, we they watched them walk up at the last election, and at two minutes to closing at the polling, they had a stack of ballots that they just walked up and handed in to be counted later. So, the, the, Which the, explains why all of the opposition candidates lost by about 60 votes across the board. <laughs> or at least that's what I speculate. Arizona oh, it's board. not speculation. <laughs> okay, My lawyer says I gotta say I speculate, right? <laughs> I gotta I gotta be careful. Thank you, Ed Foster, Mayor, and thank you.